but several familiar names. The freshman shot down there at the bottom already a gold medal with his teammates yesterday in the DMR. Initially 23 men listed for the first section. There's 16 for section number two. And Wesley Kiptu will be among them. You saw as the best mark in the Big 12 this year. He broke got school record earlier this year and is ranked fourth nationally with that 74836. But Mike Lee is going to skip the NCAs in the indoors to focus on the cross country championships that are lined up right up against it. We had a chance to talk to Wesley yesterday, Juco transfer, and that bar is going to hold up for Anderson. Riley Anderson becomes the first of the three re remaining women. To clear 1.81 on her second try. Aikenen will have a chance as well. I say Aikenen, pardon me, Sarah Hackenen. So the, the Texas Tech and Texas men are separated um, by just five points at this point. But if the Texas men can manage to score 16 points in the 3,000, they can clinch the team title. Now that might be asking a lot, but something to keep in mind as we watch this last distance event on the track. You know the Longhorns and Red Raiders will somehow factor in to the top two finishes. This is one of three events remaining for the men. And one of those is, I believe, the high jump that essentially is complete. Yeah, all that's left after this with high jump already basically complete. You've got the 3K as well as the 4x400. As you noted, chance for the Longhorns here to try to claim that men's team title to take perhaps a couple of trophies back to Austin. And officially men's high jump is still underway so a couple of Red Raiders still haven't had their points factored in just yet for the team totals if you see them flash up on the screen. They'll wait until Shankar is done with that event to officially put those points into their respective columns. First of two sections in the men's 3K. And Isai Rodriguez last two years has finished second in cross country to some Cyclones, Kurgan, and more recently Kip2. Kip2 will be in the second section here today. Of course, Kurgan out of indoor eligibility. We'll see him in the outdoor sport. Rodriguez yesterday was second in the 5K as well, and he's going to move up with a lot of friendly faces for this Cowboys team, five of them up front at the moment. Starting out high, 31 for that opening 200. Uh, it looks a lot like the women's race where we had the three Cowgirls working together at the beginning of the 3K. are getting closer and closer to finalizing the women's high jump as well as we'll get a peek at it. It's down to two women. Only Riley Anderson has cleared 1.81 meters. Sarah Hackenden will have her final chance. While some of her male teammates right now running one through five here in the men's 3K. And again, same burden for them, set a time like their teammate Hensman did on the women's side. So here's Sarah Hackman, the sophomore, her last chance to advance past 181. She's guaranteed at least silver today, and that's where she will settle. Hackman will take silver. Kaylin Rowe for Oklahoma will take bronze. That guarantees Riley Anderson, the Jayhawks, gold. She will have the chance to advance the bar and see how high she can go, but Anderson, the class of the Big 12 here in 2021 in the women's high jump. As 
We'll take a look back at the oval with men's three kick. And that's still Alex Stitt of Oklahoma State leading the Cowboys, leading one, two, three, four, five, five Cowboys, a whole cross country team through 800 meters in 207. Now I do wonder if they're employing the same tactic where one goes out as a rabbit, paces them to a fast enough time where section two cannot respond. Uh, we saw Taylor Rowe, I think, led them through about a mile before she hopped off the track. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't bring Taylor Rowe back out for this. Yeah, she did such a good job. So Alex Stitt is a, a true freshman, so I have a feeling that's what they're doing. Again, I have to imagine Eastside Rodriguez who's been running third will be your candidate to make that push eventually. That's right. Uh, we saw it last night in the 5K, um, Isai Rodriguez and Alex Mayer took a second and third to Wesley Kiptu, uh, but they were separated. Uh, Isai Rodriguez ran 13.55 and Mayer ran 14.07. So there is a, a slight gap there. Yeah, uh, Rodriguez has already moved to second behind Stitt. Mayer shopping pretty behind him. Uh, it would be incredible if this actually worked because I think out of anyone currently in the Big 12, Isaiah Rodriguez has taken runner-up honors at more Big 12 championships than just about anybody. However, Wesley Kiptu seems totally fine running a time trial by himself, so not exactly the same situation with Kaylee Logue, uh, who, you know, struggled to keep pace. Uh, and as you can see, Alex Stitt now walking off the track, Isaiah Rodriguez taking over the lead. The next time you see us put up five names, Stitt's not going to be there anymore. He dropped back for Rodriguez and will now slowly fall behind everybody else's. Again, he has exited after running the early pace. There's Eastside Rodriguez, who's a little too accustomed to looking at a cyclone ahead of him. Now, all of a sudden, he's your leader, and it's him against the clock. Trying to set a time, just hoping for that quirky dynamic that we saw on the women's side involving the same two schools. That's right. So 4.17.10 is the time through 1.600. So they're about on pace for a 7.50, uh, about eight minutes. Uh, and Isai Rodriguez, he's actually run faster than that. He's run a 7.54. Uh, again, that was in a, a pretty competitive field. So this is always harder to do by yourself. A little over 800 meters now that Rodriguez has been running in the lead. The freshman shop, his teammates moved up behind him in second. Pretty admire. And then you, the first non-cowboy is up to Knight, the sophomore Longhorn. Back in fifth, 10 seconds back of the trailing cowboy. And Wesley Kip, too, who will feature in the second section, has run 1748 before. So if he's capable of running 1342 by himself, I would think he probably can do the same in the 3K, um, but the Isai Rodriguez now lapping runners, chasing down anyone who can see is, is gonna give him his best go from section one. So he's currently 521 through 2K. And a little over two thirds of the race has been run now. You see your women's champion in the high jump, Riley Anderson. That was her second attempt at 1.84. She'll have one more go at it. She's already locked up the goal. Silver went to Hackney of Oklahoma State. Row of Oklahoma took bronze. Rodriguez still running just over eight minute pace for 3K. I think if he wants a shot at taking home the overall title, he'll probably have to dip under that eight minute barrier. Again, I think the women's race really put in pers into perspective the burden on some of your favorites in a format like this. So if Wesley Kiptu does manage to win this event in that second section, it'll increase the appreciation even more so of what he would have been able to do. Uh, will this finally be the time that Isai Rodriguez captures gold in a distance event after settling for so much silver? Uh, and that's a new face right now, Ryan Shoppy. We talked to the freshman yesterday, part of that relay win. 
That's right. He's hanging on the shoulder of Rodriguez and actually looks pretty strong right now. Uh, now he's leading. Ran a fantastic anchor leg last night against University of Texas to hate, take home that DMR win. The true freshman from Oklahoma State. So now the question is, is this part of the plan? Or is the freshman eyeing perhaps gold? Final lap. Freshman shot. Perhaps will be setting the time to beat. Isai Rodriguez falling back a bit. This was your anchor in yesterday's DMR win for Oklahoma State. And it looks like he has a lot left in the tank and he's not taking any chances with that clock. What kind of time can he set to challenge Wesley Kip to in that second section? And he's gonna cross just over eight minutes. 801.65 final time for Ryan Schaup. Great finish, great last 600 meters for him. Uh, Isai Rodriguez finishing in 807.28. Alex Mayer, 813. I mean, no matter how, what happens with Wesley Kip 2 in section two, uh, the Cowboys have put up some pretty solid times. Well, the freshman has just set a new record for this facility. A nine-year-old mark wow. falls by more than five seconds. So Isai Rodriguez finishes about five and a half seconds behind his freshman teammate. Oklahoma State goes one, two, three. Again, that's the first section. We've got a few more brand names coming your way in the second section. And we will see what Wesley Kipju has in mind. Great meet this weekend for Ryan Shop, the freshman. I have a feeling we'll be saying his name quite a bit over the next few years in Big 12 competitions. So Riley Anderson, uh, Ultimately, with a mark of 181, is officially your Big 12 champion in the women's high jump. She exits at 184 when she was all by her lonesome. So the junior Jayhawk Big 12 champ. Looks up, bar still intact. That's a gold medal going her way back to Lawrence. Both high jump golds will go back to the Sunflower State. Shankar of K-State winning on the men's side. As Anderson, Everly, and England, the trio who competed in today's finals. mentioned the team standings Longhorns right now leading both Texas men just a two point edge on Texas Tech and on the women's side uh, the Longhorns probably already start boxing up that big trophy for a fourth straight year for a seventh time in the last eight years for a 24th time in their collegiate programs history indoors. Texas women really showing why they're the, the class of the Big 12. All right, so here is the second batch of our men's 3K, highlighted by Cyclones and Longhorns. Wesley Kiptu is your favorite. And something to remember, uh, very close team battle right now between Texas and Texas Tech on the men's side. If the Longhorns can manage to put 16 points on the board in this event, they would clinch the team title. I think that might be a bit of a tall order, um, but definitely something that they are probably thinking about as they go into this event. There's your cross country champion in his first year with Iowa State, junior college transfer. Your 5K champion decisively yesterday. He 
immediately slipped it into fifth gear at the start yesterday in the 5K. And we'll see what his thoughts are after seeing a freshman set a pretty impressive mark of 801.65. Kip to earlier this year set the Iowa State mark that had been set by teammate Hergott. And right now sits fourth nationally at a 74836. Obviously, that would easily claim the gold for him if he could flirt with that kind of number again. This is likely his last indoor event of 2021. And so shift focus back to cross country afterwards. And that should do it as Kip two takes the lead and presumably it'll be his lead to hang on to. Wow. <laughs> Obviously uh, you contrast that with the last race where you had five Cowboys running together pacing each other. Kip two has a similar burden that his female teammate Kaylee Logue had, will he be able to execute? Yeah, I mean, we saw him do this last night in the 5K, so I think he has no problem time trialing himself to very elite times. The gloves are on, he's ready to go. Uh, definitely showing why. He's also also off to a really fast start. Uh, a minute, 400. 59.9 <laughs> through 400. You see how much of a wedge he's already created. Avila Martinez, Morris Gomez, the Longhorns in that next grouping. So Kip to making his way around. Oh, we saw our final women's field event. Riley Anderson with a mark of 181, the only woman, woman able to clear the bar. And the junior Jayhawk will take the title back to the Sunflower State. JoJo, we're talking with the champion. Congratulations. How does it feel to win a Big 12 title today? Um, feels pretty good. My goal is just to come out and jump well and jump 181, which I did, so I was happy with that. Do you have any uh, criticism uh, or critique of your performance today? How would you evaluate it? Um, I think I did pretty well overall. I think I just have to focus on like doing the simple things right and like attacking every bar. And thinking about this past year, all the challenges everyone has gone through in 2020, what does it mean to you to, to bring home a Big 12 title? Um, it definitely means a lot since training has been kind of different and it's harder to um, train with everyone together. So this is definitely something special in our member for a while, forever. Congratulations, Riley, great job today. Riley Thank Anderson, you. your champion here in 2021. Uh, best mark in the Big 12, her best mark on the season. And you heard her mention, had her eye on that 181. Able to come through with the title for the Jayhawks. Wesley Kip, too. That margin continues to grow, better than 13 seconds through the first thousand. Almost a, a better use of our time might be to think about the chase pack and how <laughs> he might place against that first section. I think. Wesley Kiptu obviously is running away with this thing. But uh, behind him, you know, Abraham Avila Martinez, the freshman at Texas, is leading that that chase pack. Um, we'll see in just a moment what their 1200 split is, but they were 245 through 1,000 meters. Uh, here we go, 318 through 1200. So right now they're at about 815 pace. So it looks like our Oklahoma State guys from section one will probably factor into that that podium standings uh, second and third place. But we'll see if the Texas trio are able to ratchet down the pace. And again, after seeing the women's race unfold the way it did, it just gives you added appreciation of what Wesley Kiptu perhaps will be able to pull off here. That's right. This is his first full season as a Cyclone.
And let's check back in with uh, one of the Red Raiders who's really hoping uh, that they will wind up doing enough in these final couple of events to edge out Texas for the men's title. JoJo. Uh, congratulations on the win today. I know you had a busy hour between that mile final and the thousand final. Uh, can you take us through that experience a little bit? How are your legs feeling for the thousand? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I wasn't prepared like for to win the Big 12 championship because like all my focusing is uh, I'm focusing more for the nationals and I'm doing like more workouts for the the 800 meter and. Uh, so today and yesterday was only my workout because I have been lifting uh, the day before and uh, I ran the, uh, the mile first and then the thousand so I got second in the mile and uh, I went the thousand uh, it wasn't hard for me because uh, as much as I go fast it's gonna be easy for me to finish and, and it's good it's what Sorry, it was okay. like a, a very good, yeah, it was like a very good teamwork. Uh, I was going like to kick at the last 200, uh, uh, but as soon as, uh, as I see my like my teammate coming behind me, I just like waited for him to come so I can like ha like encourage him, so I can encourage him like to follow me and get uh, at least a second place. Awesome, that was really exciting to watch. Uh, congratulations yeah. on the win today and uh, good you. luck at the Nationals. Thank you. Thank you so much. Getting that win is a big part of Texas Tech men right now being up by five with officially two events to score, including though this 3K being one of them. And we will see how it all plays out. Wesley Kip two again. Okay, so we're coming in on the home stretch here in the 3,000 meters. Again, the 18th event that will be scored is this 3K and then we'll be down to the four by 400. Uh, and right now, Kipti's on pace to break 750, which is pretty close to his PR. His PR is 748. Uh, I mean, we talked about this earlier. He was able to PR in the 5K last night all by himself, as he's doing right now, running 3 1342, and clearly has no problem doing the same thing in the 3,000 meters. His teammate, Nehemi, too, is uh, running third right now in this section, sandwiched in between the Longhorn freshman, Yasin Abdallah who's been running about 20 seconds back of Kiptu. And if uh, the Texas Longhorns want to clinch this men's team title, they've got to put points on the board in this 3K ahead of that 4x4 showdown with Texas Tech. Got our man Nathan on camera, and his only instructions is just uh, follow Wesley Kiptu for a few thousand meters. He's been able to do exactly that. Easier said than done for the rest of this competition. And Yasin Abdallah followed by Nehemia two, running second and third in this section. Wesley Kip two on his final lap. And Wesley Kip two will take a convincing 3K finish with a time of 7.57.29. Wow. So it actually ended up being pretty close. Uh, a lot closer um, to Ryan Shop's winning, winning time from section one, who ran 8.01 than the, the women's race. I ah, know. It was just going to run because I already yes, uh, raced yesterday and today was just going out and run. Yep. Now, can you tell us about the gloves? Is it cold in the facility? Oh, yeah, usually, yeah, because my hands get cold. And no matter what, uh, I just keep on. It must be tough to yep. train at Iowa State sometimes. It's so cold there. <laughs> yeah, but I like it. You like it? Yeah, well, you're obviously doing yep. fantastic. Uh, congratulations on the double gold this weekend. And uh, can't wait to see what you can Th do at the national championships. Thank you so much. Again, Wesley Kiptu, I think the next time we see him will be over in Stillwater at the Cross Country Championships on March 15th. He's uh, definitely established himself this weekend.